true thing. One thing I know to be true, 11 weeks into the season is how we're phrasing it. Jamie Erdahl, you're up first. I'm a damn fool. Ooh. What I think I know nice. is what I know is that Patrick Mahomes is any cliche, annoying thing that you're saying about any player. He's got that dog in him. Mm -hmm. He is him. What else mm -hmm. we got? Like, he's the man. He is, he's yeah. the man. Yeah. He's the guy. And in the preseason, I made a prediction that the Chiefs were not going to mm. make the playoffs. And mm. I've been learning a lot of things on this show, like which fan bases are the most vocal, which ones really feel like even if you go for another team to do something, they think it is a direct indictment on their organization. Not like, oh, no, I just might think that the Raiders were going to be good this year. That's for a whole other segment sure. and conversation. But the fact that I relied so much on Patrick Mahomes having a down year without Tyreek Hill – is insane. It was. I'm an insane person. And there are other people who think this. And I went out on a limb, and the limb snapped, and now I'm laying on the ground. So this is what I know. Patrick Mahomes has earned his right every year to be considered a special quarterback. Frankly, he is doing the things that I think the Packers wanted Aaron Rodgers to do this year, which is lift everybody up around him, make everyone feel and play better, no matter the wide receiver. It doesn't matter who Patrick Mahomes is ever going to play with. He makes him really good. This are his statistics this season and the next closest player. Are you kidding me? 300-yard passing yard difference between him and Josh Allen. Handful, I can't do math, between Mahomes and Burrow. Yeah. First down passing between Josh Allen. And the names on the right are also fantastic quarterbacks. But Patrick Mahomes, seriously, with the way you play, I mean, he is... He's out there, and we've seen, we know the parallel, but like the point guard parallel. Just sure. like wheeling and dealing and making things up as he goes. He's just having fun. He's doing golf swings. He's trying to show people, like, it doesn't matter when the play breaks down. He said after the game uh, when he found Travis Kelsey a couple times in the red zone, he's like, if I don't see him covered, if I see him in man coverage, I'm just going to him. I don't even go through my reads anymore. It's like he pretends to go through the read, but he knows he's mm. going to Travis Kelsey. I think he looks like he's having fun, and the fact that anybody wanted to doubt him, including myself, is a fool. So, Patrick Mahomes, what I know to be true after 10 weeks of the season is that you are one hell of a player, you're special, and no one should ever doubt you. Do you feel good? You feel better now? I do feel better. Good. And I hope everyone who craps on me on social media feels better too because you've been they asking don't. for me to say yeah, something like that. Yeah, they, they, won't, they won't let it go. They're going to reflect that. They won't let it go. They're like, what are you going to say this week? It's like, all right. They got other issues than you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, did, I did pick uh, Patrick Mahomes to be the uh, I know MVP, did. but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, what I know to be true 11 weeks through the season is no matter what uniform Tyreek Hill puts on, he will dominate on and off the field. You just mentioned Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if he would be the same without this guy. He has gone down to South Beach, took his talents to the 305, and has continued to ball. Leads the NFL in receptions with 81. Leads with the receiving yards. 1,148, but it's not only his production on the field and how he dictates defenses, how teams are forced to double team him, which opens up the offense for so many other people. It's also who this guy is off the field, the energy that he has brought to that building, the childlike atmosphere that he has brought when he's talking about replacing ping pong tables and his head coach thinks he's just getting more focused for the upcoming game. It's like just it. like, no, there's a dent in that. I got to go ahead and get a new one. When he got there and he's talking about how accurate Tua Tonga Vai low is as a quarterback as he's continued to build him up as he talks about uh river craycraft as the best wide receiver in the nfl when he tweets that out this guy's energy and what he's done on the field and how he's just elevated this entire organization has just taken this miami team put him first in the division and put him as contenders for the super bowl this mm. season Tyreek Hill has been amazing this year. And anybody that doubted him or thought because he was in that offense with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid calling the plays, no matter where this guy goes, speed, agility, mm. he has the total package and he finds a way to get it done. You surprised? No. No, not at all. No. Yeah, just speed. Having to cover these guys, uh -huh. speed kills. When you can <laughs> run the way he runs, it just changes the entire offense. Mm, it's been awesome to watch. Yeah. What a story. Uh, I feel very strongly about this. Nick Sirianni is the man. Uh, I, I love Nick Sirianni, unapologetically, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, he pissed some people off this past week. He went down to Indianapolis. It wasn't the Eagles' best game, but they came back and won. And there was an image of him standing up on the bench and screaming into the stands. And uh, we're like, are, are they talking to Colts fans now? I think he was hyping the Eagles fans, of which there were a lot there. 
And then he went in afterwards and had opinions that not related to the victory that about Frank Reich. And he did the whole like, you don't want to know how I feel about Frank Reich, but I'm going to tell you anyway. That is a mentor to me. That's someone who's important. And I saw this tweet online. This is verified account from this guy, Du Bois, who must be a Cowboys fan, which I respect. And he tweeted, easily the most unlikable coach in the entire NFL. <clears throat> 36,000 people liked that tweet. First of all, if you think Nick Sirianni is the most unlikable coach in the NFL, I got some other names for you that will knock him <laughs> off that thing that I'm not even going to mention in this segment. But uh, I think he is everything that Philadelphia needs. Uh, he's a second-year guy who, in his first year with an unproven quarterback and some old veterans, went to the playoffs. And in his second year, is 9-1. And this is not the thing that Matt LaFleur did where he came in in the prime of an MVP quarterback and kind of just, let's be honest, maybe a bit of a passenger on the best player in the league. He came in with some old linemen, some old D linemen, and some random defensive backs and a quarterback who was wildly unproven and has lit the world on fire. Um, Nick Sirianni is a guy who goes back to uh, Mount Union where he was a division three wide receiver. He's coached offense. He's coached defense. Quality control, quality control, quality control. Look at the resume. And then finally as a head coach, uh, you may look at him as the most unlikable, but I currently look at him as the most unbeatable. He has the best record in the entire NFL in his second year. If you don't like him, sorry, cry about it. He'll beat you. I like Nick Sirianni. He is Philly to the core, and he works, and they love him, and I do too. It's amazing, his personality, how it's a match for the city there. I'll stay on that coaching staff, by the way, real quickly and say, Jonathan Gannon, one of the things that I'm sure is that nobody should be calling for that guy's head in Philadelphia. Mm. It is unbelievable how they, this fire Jonathan Gannon thing is one of the best defenses in the league this year, statistically. Uh, moving on to another team in the NFC East, though, one thing I know for sure, Giants offensive coordinator Mike Kafka is not long for that job. Now, that's the bad news, Giants fans. Uh, maybe the silver lining of good news here is that this team is really banged up right now and they might be coming down to earth a little bit and maybe that'll take a little bit of the air out of Mike Kafka's immediate head coaching uh, candidacy but I, I think this time next year we're probably talking about Kafka as a strong yeah. head coaching candidate for the job that he has done already as I've explained to people in the Giants building recently it's like wow you guys are really good Imagine how good you're going to be when you're actually good because the talent is not there yet and they're going to catch up at some that. point and the way that they've been coaching now I know this is not the best week right now because they just lost to the Lions but on the whole what they've been able to do offensively uh, with a offensive line that they're still building up and talent at the wide receiver position that's just not there mm -hmm. right now and getting the most out of Saquon Barkley when other coaching staffs have not in recent years I think Mike Kafka is doing a fantastic job he was on our colleague uh, Tom Pellis Sarah's list of head coaches yeah. mm -hmm. in waiting and uh, with good reason. So let, let's see about Mike Kafka at 35 years old. Definitely going to be a head coach well before he gets to 40, I believe. Yeah. Check out Jim Trotter's article over on NFL.com if you want to know a couple of the things that he knows to be true in the NFL so far this season. Get